we are heading in to Tony Mugo's studio, Architectural Glass. We're going to find out what that's all about. Come on, come on, come on. We are visiting Tony, and Tony, I'll let you introduce yourself as you tell us all about Architectural Glass. <laughs> what does that even mean? I mean, glass is a canvas that I use as an artist. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've worked with it for quite a while. I think it's about now, um, since 1992, I've been working on the same media. So, I mean, I'm just fascinated by the material because yeah. it offers a lot of possibilities. And it's uh, used in architecture, which is one of my favorite um, studies. How, yeah. how does it fuse? Because, you know, many of us think of architecture a building. Think of glass, ya kukuni Yeah. Now, <laughs> building namaji. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Yeah? I mean, the, okay, keeping it simplistically, yeah, but go ahead. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, the, the scope of glass in architecture is huge. Yeah. Um, and and glass has a lot of tradition. Mm. Has a lot of. Uh, um, it's a very challenging material. Mm. Uh, very technical. Mm. So you have to approach it with a lot of understanding. Yeah. yeah and a lot of confidence. Yeah. And that's why it's take, it takes very long for you to master the craft. Wow. Yeah. But everything starts from paper. Mm. You, you draw your designs on paper. Okay. And then from paper you blow it up, yeah. And it's like what you just mentioned, yeah. Uh, that uh, we know glass from what we drink from, mm. or maybe from our mirrors in the house, what we look ourselves at. Mm. And that's what we fail to understand that there's other techniques and applications that can be used on glass. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. We want to know what keeps you happy. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of your pieces. This one, this that. What well, is that? This is a, a fused piece of glass. Mm -hmm. We divide glass into three different categories. There's a hot glass techniques, mm -hmm. warm glass techniques, and cold glass techniques. So I, I am borderline between warm glass and cold glass. Now what I have here is a piece that has been done by using heat mm. to fuse two pieces of glass and to bend the glass to take a form that I, that I like. This is fused glass and we regard it as warm glass techniques. But largely what I do, what you see on the table for architecture, a lot of my work is falls under the cold glass techniques. That's interesting. Hot glass is where you melt the glass, blow, yeah, like the famous Kitengela glass, what they do. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And so when you create this art, mm. where do people use it? I mean, how is it used? Well, um, it's used to enliven spaces. Uh, traditionally, it's used in the liturgy of it in the churches was because you celebrate God's eldest daughter mm. that is light. So that's why you see it very popular in the cathedrals. You, know, oh. you have these long windows. And yes, the idea that is, is to make true. you look up. That's the architectural glass in those windows. That, yes, uh, that that's, I think... yeah, that's part of the liturgy of uh, even the, of the, of the construct of the, of the churches mm. from the Byzantine eras. Yeah, all through until today, it's being used a lot. I've done mm. quite a number of churches. Yeah. Mm. It's getting popular with the commercial clients uh, for residential. Um, also corporate, we do trophies. Mm. Yeah, done Price Waterhouse Trophies Awards, done uh, Lewa Marathon Award. Last year's award, we did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Koya, we did also some time back. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the it's it's a, it's a very big uh, field. Mm. Yeah. Great. And so if if um, somebody wanted to get into something like this, mm -hmm. um, because most of us have never heard of architectural glass, I know you found it accidentally and now it's become a career. Yes. How, how do they start? What, what, what do they, what, 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 what aptitude, I mean, what do they need? What do they need to study? Uh, first of all is interest. Of course. And passion. Of yeah. course. Passion is what gets me here at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, on top of that is for glass, the challenges are that um, it's, uh, we don't have a school as such that teaches glass. Mm -hmm. But which is for me is a, is a strong thing because uh, what happens is that when you, when, when you want to learn the material, you apprentice mm. with, a, with a glass master. Yeah? yeah. I have my own glass master that I apprentice with. Yeah. And I learn from them. I'm still learning from them. Mm. And I have students who come in here. I have Kenya University students who come here every year. Mm. I get a lot of about five students, or even nine sometimes. Mm. And they come for three months and apprentice in the studio. Tony, if you were to think about your hope for Africa, for the world even, right. um, people in the art space, what what's your hope? Well, my, my hope is to see um, a city that is lively, Mm. vibrant, mm. 
And I think that's where artists come in, you know. We, artists are, are supposed to make spaces aesthetically appealing. Yes. yes. And uh, that's why I believe in the three T's, which is uh, talent, technology, and tolerance mm. to brand a city mm. and make it more vibrant. Mm. I don't think we need skyscrapers so much. Mm. We just need more interesting spaces. I'd like to know, where can we find your work? It's, it's quite a number of places, yeah. A few hotels in Nairobi have, have done uh, internal uh, installations for them. There's Kigwa Conference. Some of them I can't remember offhand, yeah. But there's mm. popular, popular places, uh, Nairobi National Museum, mm. where there's an installation at the entrance. Um, at JKIA, yeah, the mm. new terminal. Mm. Also have a hanging installation there. A lot of churches uh, from Islands. Many of the Catholic churches have done quite a number of work there. Yeah, and um, uh, residential you know, homes as well. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. So I guess if we wanted to get you to do some work for us, um, if anybody wanted you to, to, to make work for them, they could come here and find you here at yeah. Karen Village sure, yeah. Um, yeah. to create the work for them. And I guess also for artists who are thinking of doing this, there is bread on the table. There is money to be made doing beautiful architectural glass work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Tony, yeah. thank you so much for yeah, spending welcome. this <laughs> afternoon telling us all about these fantastic, amazing pieces mm. that you have done. Thank you. Great. Sante Sana. Ooh, look at that. This is... The Kipsigis Museum. I'm so excited to learn a little bit of history. Come on, let's go. You want to sit again? Let's go through and see what you have here in Kipsigis Museum. I want to hear everything, everything, everything. Good. Now, yes. these are items made from a material called brass. Most of our people, the Bantu community, used to do a lot of metal things. Mm. And with the coming of the Indians in the early 19th century, uh, brass became a very important aspect of ornamentation mm. and believe it or not made from brass and these were the brass for women oh on stage. really do you want to try it? okay sure how is that you see the creativity it's lovely. look at the <laughs> way it's done I like it. Love and it. it's so well it's so oh, well yeah. it's made. Well done. Yeah, and obviously well it lasts done. a very long time. For definite. Fantastic. You want to see more? Yes. But, it, but but Philip, before we see more, please tell me, I mean, where did all of this come from? What what what, what is the Kipsigis Museum? What you see here is a collection that has started back in 2008 mm -hmm. when one man called Mr. Paul C. Tum mm -hmm. decided that he wanted just to keep what his culture was. Because he believed it much that he learned from his cultural aspect, mm. yes. Mm. And he decided to collect all this and started a museum called the Kipsi Museum in Kericho district. Mm. And what you are seeing now here in Nairobi at Karen Village is the second branch of the Kipsi Museum, which is a partnership between us and Karen Village, because Karen Village is an arts and culture center. So we want to give that feel of culture in current village. We are learning the things that we used to do and making sure that the knowledge, be it in proverbs, be it in folk tales, can be passed down to our own children. Mm. So that we have a lot of dignity in ourselves Absolutely. because we really have to tell our stories. Yeah. If we can't tell our stories, mm. we don't find dignity in what people are telling about us. Absolutely. So wow. really, that's, that's the reason why I started this. Before you show me anything else, Paul, yes. uh, Philip, yes. I really do want to honor you Thank for you. taking this as a next generation and understanding what this means to the future 1,000 years, 2,000 years of Africans who are going to come behind you and your, your care in, in giving us dignity by teaching us all about this history. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming too. And yeah. And please share Share with us. Yeah, I want to take you, maybe let me pick another item from mm -hmm. the Kipsis community, then I'll choose another tribe because we want, as Kipsis Museum, mm. to, because now we are in Nairobi, yes. we really want to celebrate every tribe of this nation because yeah. our cultures can really unite us. Culture yeah. should be used, and when tribal cultures should be used as a point of uniting us because when we learn more about ourselves, the more we demystify the many things that we are told about ourselves. Philip for governor, where were? Thank I like you. you. Philip for governor. Oh, for definite, yes. <laughs> now, unifying cultures. Yes. yes. What you see here is a very important aspect of headgear. Mm -hmm. The Kipsi community mm -hmm. um, did 
take their children through different rites of passage from mm. birth mm. to now the most important a rite of passage from childhood to adulthood mm. and you know those days mostly people or let's say ladies were taught how to take care of the family how mm. to take care of children how to store food how to prepare food all the kind of things for the boys it was more on the things they were doing outside taking care of cows mm. protecting the community it was very mm. important because everyone was worrying because we wanted to have space mm. because as we came into this country everyone wanted to have a space mm. and the best places mm. so as a rite of passage mm-hmm. as i told you mm-hmm. Guys used to go for about six months. Can I know that? Yeah, you can. You can for definite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, after six months, when they've been taught quite a lot, mm-hmm. every other graduate mm-hmm. on the day of graduation, mm-hmm. they come out, mm-hmm. and just like the modern universities and modern uh, uh, institutions do, on your graduation day, you have a graduation gown. Mm-hmm. So this is a graduation gown for a first class honors mm-hmm. student. And there's wow. a lot of symbolism. Yeah. There's a lot of symbolism in the wearing. Mm-hmm. Like this, it's a bit smaller, but mm-hmm. this should cover your eyes. Mm. As in now, after this, you'll open up to the new I've world. I've seen the picture, so amazing. Oh, the symbolism. So that yeah. opens you up to the yes, new world because yes. you've graduated. During seclusion, most of them, be it mm. the Tiganias, be it the Embus, when most of the graduates were still in seclusion, mm. this item, you'll find even the Kikuyus, the Kikuyu mm. bit does not have the upper bit, mm. but this lower bit only, mm. and it covers the eyes. Mm. That is... It is a system to show you that the past will now go, and when mm. they open this on your graduation day, it is the beginning of new things. Our future. Yes. You know, that's what I like about our history and our culture. There's so much richness in terms of like, just as you're talking symbolism. about the symbolism. Yeah, it's the symbolism. Everything had a meaning. Yeah. And I, when I look at the world today, and there is so much, um, there's a lot of gaps and that cultural gaps. That gap. is a word, that is a word. And I think because of the, 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 the cultural gaps and people not having a sense of identity, because mm-hmm. of not knowing where they are from. Oh yeah. So they yeah. almost kind of don't know where they're going. Oh yeah. yeah. And what I love about the African way of teaching is um, every aspect of uh, teaching aid mm. was within your environment. So finally you graduate mm-hmm. and it feels so good to wear this. It's one of those wonderful days that everyone has, just mm. like any other graduation. Absolutely. Are people for that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Let me hey. it there. You know what? Yeah. This reminds me of an article I was reading the other day. Um, there is this bracelet in the Maasai culture called the Olkatar bracelet. And the Olkatar bracelet, I don't know, did you hear the story? There's a story about the Olkatar bracelet that Sadly, this actually saddens my heart. It is, it is, um, it is. A number of Maasai families went to the UK mm-hmm. to look for their bracelet. The Okata bracelet is something that's handed down from family to family, generation to generation. Somehow, um, it was either stolen or taken yes, yeah, from the Maasai yeah. to the UK. And their whole family was losing their heritage and had to go all the way there to find it. That totally breaks my heart. I mean, it does. It does. And um, it's not only in Maasai land, uh, all over Africa, a lot of our artifacts were taken away and stored. Just imagine, just to be stored. And once in a while, remove them for auctions. And really, all these things mean a lot to us. We have a lot of attachment to most of these things. It's mm. so, to us, I told you, it's symbolism. Mm. So even a small artifact mm. really connects us to our past. Yes. And that's why we gain our courage as a people to stand. So it's, it's really a sad story that uh, yeah. they had to go that far while well, it was something that belonged to them. Philip, I'm just wondering, how, how, do, we, how do we protect that? How do we prevent this? What, what do you say? What, what do we do? This is the thing. By people taking their own time. This is, this is something that you, 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 it's not a profit-making venture, but it is something that really satisfies the, the soul. Mm. What I really want to ask most people is... I love that. Just a second. Satisfies yeah. the soul. Yeah, it does. I really like that. Go on. It does. So, so by collecting our items and making sure that we appreciate the very little things that are still remaining within our mm. own communities mm. and storing them and keeping mm. them and mm. uh, we say really safeguarding them. We mm. should be safeguarding our cultures mm. by doing what? Taking care of the things that are still available that can still teach our own children many other things. Mm. So person, people, communities, ga- counties, governments, mm. the Kenyan government should mm. really make sure that there's enough that is put aside to make sure that storage of these things and even 
being able to go and look for these things and storing them and keeping them for the future is mm. very important. Mm. A lot of people look at conservation as an issue that uh, is not money making mm. in terms of the way we do things in this country. Mm. But conservation in the long run is very important because it, it brings in tourism. Mm. It brings in a lot of ecotourism. Absolutely. It's very important, Absolutely, that, is, yeah. that is. Because you see, when you look at this country, uh, the rest of the other communities, people think that it's only Maasai who still have a culture. Mm. But all of us have a culture. Mm. But because most of other communities have not taken it upon themselves, you don't have to wait for anyone. Take it upon yourself, like I said. It will really satisfy your soul and you, you will have been able to collect all these things and you're able to give it and show it for pride of your own community. It is a labor of love, let me say. To, to be here, it's a labor of love. And um, mm. personally, I get excited. Mm. Uh, this thing on uh, every other time, I don't get tired about talking about my own culture. It's not like yeah. politics. We talk about politics yeah. and you feel like you're injured inside. Yeah. For culture, it's yeah. something that really oils your heart and yeah. makes you happy. And that's yeah. what makes me... Wake up Where's every day. the heart and making you happy? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about this bracelet while you're at it. This? Yeah. Maybe by Amongst the Kipsigis. Yeah, get oil. <laughs> Among us, the Kipsigis. <laughs> yeah. This item is called Chavasta. 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 That is the word. So, Chavasta is yeah. an item that was used by men yeah. and it was always put on the biceps. Okay. The beauty about this, I told you about the indigenous way of teaching. Mm. This item was worn on the biceps. Mm -hmm. And when a father or somebody would see mm. that me, Philip, mm. I'm trying to be like Michael, mm. who's so good in doing this. Mm. I want to emulate him, mm. though it's very hard for me, mm. would tell me, look, don't compare your biceps with your bicep wear with somebody else's. That is telling you, God has given you a talent in another area. Don't try forcing yourself doing this. Mm. Please find your own path in life. Such a timeless so, lesson. Such yeah. a timeless lesson. So, be yourself. Yeah, Stop comparing yeah, yourself yeah, with other with people. That, and that's what is happening with many, many youth right yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, we want to be like so and so. And we end up getting so frustrated because no two individuals can be the same. Yeah. So finally they say, Magiro mm. agenge, so, chavas Yeah, chavas that's the word. <laughs> happy about that? Very happy about that. Okay, so, ooh, look at that. Wedding dress. Yeah. Dress. Tell us about that one. This yes. is one of the most important uh, wear mm -hmm. made from leather mm -hmm. by the Turkana people of Kenya. Oh, Turkana. Yes, it's a Turkana. And mm -hmm. I want you to see the kind of design that has been made from. Mm. This is an intermarrying of sheep and goat skin mm. and a lot of decoration. So this is the wedding gown worn mm. by a girl who's mm. getting married. Mm. So it's well done. Mm -hmm. with, uh, it's not, um, the, 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 the beads are not overdone, mm. but they look so well placed. Yeah. Yeah. So fortunately, mm -hmm. the Turkana, just like the Maasai, mm -hmm. still maintain a lot of their cultural ways of life. Mm -hmm. So yes, so this is worn by the bride to be. Mm -hmm. So not exaggerated, but still looking beautiful. It's it? very elegant. It? Yeah, you can even see some of the patterns in the corner there, like some kind of like embossing. Oh yeah, and, and uh, like even the provision for the bust and everything. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, eventually look at that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Fantastic. Lovely. It is. It is. Uh, how old is the dress? Um, This should be more than... Um, it should be about 15, 20. Oh, wow. And because they're still being done. Yes. But they yes, can last. They can last. And you know, they have their own special way of keeping leather alive and uh, uh, not eaten by mold. Yeah. And it's even softened. And you realize they've done okra on it, red okra. Look, 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 look at the Look at the Yeah. Look yeah. At the I see that. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Ooh, instruments. Which is your favorite? Mm, the litungu. All right. The litungu. I hope is we can hear a kajam. I'll try. <laughs> uh, it's a luya liar. Uh huh. And uh, it's a smaller version of the nyatiti. Nyatiti is a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And um, what differentiates the litungu from the rest is this hole. Okay. So unlike the rest, it doesn't. Uh, the rest don't have this hole. Mm. Yeah. So you can feel it's well tuned. Eh? Mm. Nice sound. Can I try? Yeah, yeah, you can. For definite. When I'm very, when I'm very, okay. When I'm very, yeah. I, you're getting, you're getting the the joy of it, yeah. So uh, it's a. Uh, this one is uh, an, an eight string, mm. and um, to the luos, let me just digress a bit. To the luos, um, the nyatiti is eight string, mm. and it has symbolism again. Right. Mm. For the luo man, mm. 
when they are born, mm. the first four days after birth, there's a ceremony. It's a very important ceremony. Mm. And also in death, the fourth day after his uh, died, yeah. yeah. there's also a ceremony. Yeah. So that's why the four and four for the oh, for, for the, the luos. Yeah, for the luo. Yeah. And the nyatiti was mostly you know was only played by men. Uh -huh. But nowadays, yeah. African musical instruments are really gaining ground all over the world. Mm. And um, Makadema has been going all over the world playing this uh, nyatiti. Wow. And there's also a Japanese lady who plays nyatiti I very with her feet, well. Actually. Oh yeah, with her feet. Yes. Yeah. It's usually you have an you have you have to have an accompaniment. Mm. Uh, usually a, mm. a small jingle mm. that hits on the on to give you the rhythm yeah. as you play it. As you play it, so then it has the two. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. This looks interesting. <laughs> Grab yeah, one? yeah. Oh, what? Uh, uh, we wanted uh, here at the museum. We wanted to create such that uh, we wanted to show a flow from yes. what you are. And um, this is uh, the his master's voice. Mm -hmm. uh, these things came around 1920s, 30s, mm -hmm. and it was such a honor for anyone, in, uh, for especially the, the indigenous people, to own this. And mm -hmm. most of them started owning these machines in the years of 40s, 50s. Mm -hmm. And uh, gramophones use uh, the 78 RPM records. Not just it's not the normal ones you know. Mm -hmm. These ones are much heavier and they are very brittle, they break. Mm -hmm. And this machine didn't use power or anything. Yeah. And um, you just, they used, to, you used to wind a, a spring inside. Yeah. So you wind it yeah. as much until you feel it's, the tog is there. Then you release it. And um, the head uses the normal, like the stethoscope. The one in the hospital used to check mm, your heart. Mm. So it's a very simple mechanism. Then plays. You can tell the stylus is so big. Yeah. And interesting. Yeah. Yes. And funny enough, um, it didn't have a major. We don't. There's no way a knob for volume or anything like that. We yeah. do want to know how they used to reduce or increase the volume. Yes. So right now it's full volume. Uh huh. And if you do that, it gets less. It gets less. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite mechanical. Yeah. I hope you've been happy seeing all this. Yeah. I have. What do you think is the impact of bringing some of this type of equipment yeah. and the impact on the traditional African music? With the coming of gramophones, we are yeah. now able to have companies and individuals who came and started recording African music. Uh -huh. And we really feel happy that they came along mm -hmm. because some of the music that they, want, they recorded back in the 50s, like in my place in Kapkatet, mm -hmm. they recorded some music in 1950. Mm -hmm. Those ones you can't find anywhere. Mm. So it was important that this thing came across mm. and they were now able to start recording African indigenous music. Yes, mm. tell us. This looks this. so regal and Oh yeah. This, this Baba is, Boom. Yeah, this yeah. is this is in modern warfare people have to wear camouflage. So and this even, is warfare. Yeah, this is warfare. Uh -huh. And this is this is a, a face mask worn by a warrior. Mm. Yes, especially if, if a warrior is known by the the other team that this is the major warrior. They would wear this so that they, the other fellows can't tell who they are and add a bit of um, uh, body 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 uh, paint. Mm. And this was worn and it is made from uh, ostrich feathers. Ostrich feathers? Yeah, these are very quite old ostrich feathers. Oh, wow. okay. And then um, something just to say the rank of the, of the warrior. That's a very important aspect. And also for a warrior who's come back home, mm. victorious. Mm. And in victory in Africa, victory mm. is not in the, the number of people who've killed or maimed, mm. but victory is in about sticking to the etiquette of war in the African way and understanding. So Very in Africa, in Africa, like mm. as the Kipsigis say, mm. we are the warriors who don't kill, mm. but bring back the spoils of war. Mm. So when we went into war, we didn't maim or kill like women. We could only fight a fellow warrior mm. went to death. Mm. But for women, children and the invalids, we used to bring them back as mm. people to add unto our communities. Mm. So a warrior always who's done such would even be given a special name and he would walk with his head high in the village. Mm. And the rest of the aspiring uh, aspiring warriors would really want to be like him. And it means they would still continue the etiquette of war mm. and doing the right thing in war. I want to interest you in one thing. Yes. Tell me this. What do you think this is? It looks like a boat. Yes, this is a water ambulance from oh. Lake Baringo. Water ambulance? Yes, it's water ambulance. Oh my, okay. Yes. In the islands of Lake Baringo, there's a community called... Um, oh, you're seeing, you're touching that. Mm. You better touch this. Oh, yes, how light, you. how light. I know, I'm just like, it's... Very, very so buoyant. Light. Yes. Oops. So the whole of this item yes. is less than four kilos. What is it made of? Balsa wood. Balsa wood is a oh. special kind of wood that grows around the islands of Lake Baringo, mm -hmm. where we find the James community. Mm -hmm. And these people, in their own ingenuity, mm -hmm. realized this item was could be able to float on water. 
and they made this raft. Mm. Why call it to the water ambulance? They live in an island. One person could sit on the first raft, then the other raft is tied to this other one. Mm. And you can imagine carrying, let's, let's say, an expectant mother or a very sick person. They mm. could just lie on this slowly. That's and, like a stretcher. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's a stretcher actually. Yeah. And it brings you all the way to the mainland mm. and you yeah. can receive help and all that. Mm. So they've been using these things for generations and generations. So uh, it's wonderful to have a water ambulance here in current village. Yes, so absolutely. I really encourage people I guess to come as you were saying, yeah. um, there's so much innovation that existed in the past because things are tried and true and they've been used for thousands of years. Yes, yeah. There's a meaning yeah. and a reason oh, yeah. for each of these artifacts. It's too bad that we're kind of coming to the end of, uh, of uh, visiting the Kipsigis Museum and learning about the different cultures that you have here. Oh, we have learned so much, Philip. Thank you so oil. much. Your... My heart is oiled. Thank you. It is Thank relaxed, you. it is oiled. It's a good place. I mean, a good You're place. Really Thank welcome. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Look at that. Hold up. Producer. Zitima, I need my glasses. This is like, I need to take a close up because. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of the times at Karen Village, we also have visiting artists like Larry King, who want to be part of this community and be known to be in the space and share their work with other artists. Larry, let me just tell me, tell me all about this painting. How did you get into this? I was buying cigarettes, a pack of cigarettes from a kiosk. Mm. So like I met this uh, chick, mm. she looked really dope. Of course it's inspired by a chick. Uh -huh. yeah. Go on, so, I'm yeah. listening. Yeah, so I liked her face. So yeah. I memorized it, I went and painted. Like, cause I liked her profile actually. I'm curious, tell me more. I thought about like women know uh, way more than they let out. So where you are right now, Larry, what's mm. next? Like my next idea is to design my own compositions mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with photographers. Mm. Yeah, with my own lighting and my own choice of of my models. That's my next thing. Because I want to also get into directing in the future. So, Larry, mm -hmm. I just want to thank you so much for coming out and sharing with us your yeah, sure. story sure. presented through this canvas art. Maybe next time we'll learn a little bit more about your digital art. Thank you for cool. coming by Karen Village and welcome again and bring other artists along with you. Cool. Hello. Right. Hello. Our African women, that's part of our art. Beautiful. Hello, how are you? Wow. Welcome in. Yes. Look at this space, just bathed with beautiful pictures. Thank you. So uh, nice to meet you. Thanks for nice. having us in your space. Tell us, tell us, tell us your name, what you do here um, at Karen Village. Well, my name is Tom Boya. Yes. Uh, I like came, the famous. I came, uh, uh, yes, the name is like the famous, <laughs> but <laughs> no relationship. Mm. Yes, so I work from here. Before, I used to work uh, from the Gordon Art Center. This is actually a visual art. Okay. But now, visual art has uh, different techniques. Mm. And especially when you're painting, there are a uh, question number of techniques inside painting. Mm. Yeah. So, like, uh, what I'm doing here is mm -hmm. uh, called mixed media. Mixed media. Yeah, okay. this, this is where you use more than one media. So in my case, mm -hmm. I use uh, acrylic paint mm -hmm. and uh, old newspaper. Mm -hmm. There's a, like a re recycled material. I can see. Yes. Writings. Yes. Mm. And uh, I also use uh, charcoal. Charcoal? In my paintings, okay. yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So basically, when when I'm selecting my newspaper, mm. some of them are mm. randomly picked, mm. but some of them are tentative. Uh, tentative in uh, the fact that they 
speak the same language as as the artist. So it's mirroring the yeah. artist. You're yes. picking from yes. your mind and yes. your heart. And you say, yes. That speaks to me. That speaks yes. to me. That speaks yes. to me. Yes. I'm going to take it and create or, something. Or basically, yes, it talks about the same theme. You are you are trying to communicate mm. to the people. Mm. Like for example, during the COVID period, yeah, many artists were inspired in different ways. Yes, and as you know, that uh, the artists usually try to communicate, usually what's happening around them. So actually, uh, when I was doing this uh, piece of work, mm -hmm. uh, I was in isolation, but not in the house, in my studio. Mm. So it's like I could come in uh, my studio and close myself inside and start working. Mm. And mm. apparently what I was producing was actually talking about things that was happening in real time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so that's how I came with uh, this. As mm -hmm. you can see, this is a lady basically in a room somewhere isolated and uh, looking outside. Yeah. the scene scenery yeah. so an experience you find that, i think most of us have had in covid times yes. where you're inside and you want to go outside yes so even you, i can see myself as a woman at the window just yes. like her looking outside yes. yes okay now if if you look behind you mm -hmm. there is uh, that piece mm. uh, about um, uh, human and technology again this piece was done uh, during uh, the same period with this mm. uh, during uh, the COVID-19 uh, period. One thing interesting about uh, the technique that I'm using is that uh, it is, uh, I have two stories taking, uh, taking place there. Mm. It's a story about me mm -hmm. and the subject and the theme of the piece. And inside there's a story on the newspapers. So it is like a story inside a, inside a story. story. So yeah. that makes it a bit uh, more unique than uh, just doing color and canvas. Yeah. Yes. It's interesting to me because um, our children, yeah. some of them went on online learning. Yes. For many of us, we're watching the presidential address every yes. day yes. Um, on our phones. Yes. I think it really captures the times very well. And so as you sit here and look at where you are, yeah. what is next for Mr. Tomboya? Only time can tell that. <laughs> <laughs> Me, my, what I can do is mm. just uh, work hard yeah. and uh, produce mm. Mm. and try to discover new things and go into the market and see how it reacts. Right. Yeah. Uh, given that uh, today we have a social platform, yes, and so the world is open. It is the open. market is open it's and open. it is in your hand. Yeah, I'll ask you one last question before you leave. Yeah. You said we uh, this the market is open. What yeah. do you think the market wants from you? They want uh, the the market is looking for new things, new art, and uh, that is more of. Uh, conceptualized type of art. Mm. It's your own conceptual as an artist. As your own concept as an artist. Mm. Yeah. So the world market is looking for uniqueness. Yeah. Use unique materials. Not just uh, the normal brush and paint. Mm. Use different things. Mm. Come up with a, a unique piece of art. Mr. Tomboya, yeah. it's been a treat to Thank be in you. your space, to be in your Thank studio, you. Thank you. to listen to you, tell us about your art and where it comes from and your journey. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank much you. welcome.